Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tennis Instead, the writer and director of Quantum Theory, one of the founding members of Eight Sided Films, here to talk to you about directing composers and working with music and film. There is an increasing trend uh, in the scoring community to write music in advance of having a movie made and make that music available on the internet and then directors go out and they find samples that they think are going to work for their movie and they license them from composers. And one of the things that we've talked about in the developmental breakdown to a big, big extent, and one of the things that we've also brought up um, in the development process of Smoking Hollywood, which is our satirical uh, directing blog, um, is the notion that's been embraced by Hollywood, particularly over the last, really the last 10 years, that tone is the driving creative force behind a movie. And that the feeling that a movie conveys is the most important creative aspect of that project. And it's not the case, as we've talked about here, action is the most important thing. So, um, so when a director starts shopping around for little chunks of music that they think are going to amplify an emotion in their movie, and then plugging those chunks of music into their movie to sort of drive home a tonal point, uh, not only are they ignoring the larger creative opportunity that's available to them, but they're belaboring a point that's already clear in the filmmaking. So, do not choose music to establish tone. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> it's not the right way to use music in film, okay? Music has a structure, just like novels have a structure, just like cinema has a structure. And the structure of music is theme, okay? Music works in themes. And uh, the smallest unit of music is a measure, which is a small series of notes. This is actually going to turn into a blog about music theory, which I think is something a lot of people don't know a lot about, so we're going to get into it a little bit. A sentence of music is called a measure, okay? And music is built on the idea that you take those measures and you repeat them over the course of a, compo a composition and you vary them to surprise the audience's ear. You tell them what to expect, and then you change it. So, what they call that in music is theme and variation. Theme is essentially a measure, or maybe four measures of music, that convey an idea. Usually an idea in film about a specific character or group of characters, for example. You watch Star Wars, the themes are very evident. Everybody knows the Darth Vader theme, Everybody knows the Luke Skywalker theme. Everybody knows Superman's theme from Superman. Those are sentences of music. They're an idea of music, okay? And over the course of the score, those ideas get mixed in with other ideas in surprising ways, and those ideas get changed uh, to satisfy the context musically that those ideas are placed in. So, you know, if you're hearing the Darth Vader theme, and you're watching a scene where another theme is dominant because something else is going on, you might hear the Darth Vader theme played by a different instrument underneath to remind you that there's danger afoot, right? Theme and variation, that's how it works. Now, and, and trust me, being good at theme and variation is not the question of watching this blog. It takes decades of study to be effective at it. So you always want to be working with composers who have a lot, a lot of classical training. You want composers who really understand their stuff and who have the habits to create compelling music uh, without having to think too hard about it so that you can instead spend your time thinking about the movie that you're making. <laughs> That's the goal. So, you find these composers and you have a movie that's about the action. A scene is something where one person wants one thing, another person wants another thing, and both people can't get their way, and now you've got conflict, okay? The composer is there to explore the themes that you are incapable of exploring with the actors. 
So, to go back to Star Wars, the thing that makes in the original Star Wars I'm talking about now, John Williams' score, so crucial to the success of the film is that it provides a sense of scale. Star Wars was a relatively inexpensive movie by today's standards, but it seems just as big. And that's because the thing that George Lucas didn't have the money to show you was the sense of a whole galaxy at war. <laughs> so John Williams came in and wrote war marches and put them in the movie. <laughs> you see how that works? That's what he. That's 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 what makes Star Wars feel big is the fact that he actually used themes that remind you of armies and remind you of sweeping action, so that when Luke Skywalker swings from one side of a chasm to the other with the princess in his arms, he tells you that this is part of a much much larger story and that these are the kinds of heroic actions that this define a galaxy and he creates that sense of scope in uh the most recent star wars movie which is at the time of this blog episode seven the thing that john williams brings to the movie is seriousness because if you watch the movie without the sound it's a ridiculous film which is not by any stretch of the imagination to indicate absurdism is a very valid, important, creative choice, is what I'm saying. It's an absurd movie. It's full of ridiculous notions. And John Williams comes in and says, now, wait a second. It's not so ridiculous. It's actually pretty scary. And, you know, without that score, all the... I don't want to give you any spoilers, but giant monster tentacle balls and things of this nature might not seem so imposing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, it's fun and it's silly and it's whimsical and that's good as long as someone comes in and explores the themes of danger and the themes of consequence. You know, the fact that the things that are happening here are going to impact all these lives across the galaxy in all these dire ways. The fact that the fate of whole planetary systems is hanging in the balance. All of that is what John Williams reminds you of in episode seven. And, um, and it winds up grounding the movie emotionally, right? Because it's not on screen. John Williams is not there to give you the tone that you're seeing on screen. He's not even there to create a tone at all. He's there to explore themes in your ear that do not have a place going into your eyeball, do not have a place on the screen itself because there's already so much going on that trying to convey that would only get in the way of the movie. So instead the composer comes in and literally goes in the side of your head. It's actually a bait and switch with music, right? And one good example of how this kind of uh, process can work in my own creative life is there's a script I posted on the eight-sided form. If you want to check it out, I invite you to. It's called Sam Bailey, okay? Sam Bailey's about a 600-year-old man who is destroying the last bits of evidence of this extraordinary life that he's lived because he doesn't understand why he's immortal. And historically, when other people have found out that this is a thing that's happening with him, They've gone way out of their way to, of course, grasp the secret. He's been tortured. He was locked up in the basement of the Vatican for a hundred years. He's been burned and flayed and all. And, and in today's world, if someone found out what was going on with him, the resources available to them to take him apart and put him back together and all these different... Ugh, he doesn't want any, He just wants to hide. He wants, he wants to disappear. And the story is about him, through the process of hunting down the evidence remaining you know, out there, the historical records of him finding a family and a place where he can open up and sort of rejoin the human race. That's the film, but um, the action of the story is him tracking down these materials with the help of these people, and these people are slowly figuring out what's going on with him, and he's trying to hide it. 
okay? So there's no visual place in the movie to go back into history and have the flashback where he gets locked up in the basement of the Vatican because getting locked up is a passive thing to do. It's not something Sam Bailey is actively doing, it's something people are doing to him and it would therefore slow the movie down to watch it because he's at that point powerless to do anything so what's the point of the scene? So then the question is how do we convey the fact that he's not just a crazy person. How do we convey the fact that this is an actual thing that's happening and that the things that he's doing are very serious things that merit, you know, that merit emotional investment? Well, the score is our tool. So by creating the music of his life, the music of the past, right? And, and specifically my ear, frankly, is locked into something like a Bach Brandenburg Concerto, but with more of a Russian influence because he wound up in Russia for a time and also because I like the weird timing that Stravinsky puts in his music. Um, and it makes it a little bit more urgent, frankly. Um, but that, that resonant classical sound that's very influenced by religion, but also divorced from it, that's Sam's past, you know, that's where that's where he comes from and if it's in your ear Then you've got this amazing emotional battle in your head between seeing this person on the screen who seems like They might not be operating On all cylinders, you know what I mean that they may not have all their oars in the water so to speak But being grounded in their reality so the question of whether or not he's crazy and the question of whether or not he's telling the truth and how much of what people are uncovering about him can and should be trusted starts to become a really emotionally important question. You don't realize it, but it's because the themes of his life are being fed to you through your ear. That is what a great composer does. And um, I invite the people who are producing independent film to stop shortchanging their projects by finding pre-recorded sound that doesn't mean anything specific in the context of their movie and instead having themes written that cut directly to what parts of their world and their story they are not able to show you on screen. That's the most important thing that music can accomplish. And uh, with that, I'm going to cut this blog off. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next time. And uh, if you'd like to see the Smoking Hollywood blogs that we're doing about how not to do business in Hollywood, you should go to the 8-Sided Forum at 8-SidedForum.com. And you can also find a copy of Sam Bailey there if you're curious. Thanks again. Have a great evening, everybody. Mm -hmm.